Something in the mist! Something in the mist! Shut the doors! Shut the doors, mate! Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to be recapping the movie The Mist. In Bridgerton, Maine, artist David, his wife Stephanie, and their eight-year-old son Billy seek refuge from a violent thunderstorm that causes extensive property damage. The next morning, while inspecting their property, Billy finds that their boathouse has been damaged by a tree from their neighbor Brent's property. As they investigate, they notice a mysterious mist hovering over the lake from the mountain across but they don't dwell on it. David heads over to Brent's house to discuss insurance information for the boathouse repairs. During their conversation, David learns that Brent's car was crushed by another tree during the storm. As a favor, David offers Brent a ride into town with his son in the back seat. On their way, they pass several suspicious military vehicles heading in the opposite direction. In town, the supermarket is crowded with people stocking up on groceries following the storm. Among the shoppers are David, his son, and Brent. Sirens suddenly blare as military and police vehicles rush by the store. An elderly man, Dan Miller, bursts into the store with a bloody nose, frantically claiming that something in the mist has taken a young man. His warnings are dismissed as madness. Gradually, the mist begins to envelop the store, and an earthquake shakes the building, causing panic among the shoppers. Despite the chaos, one woman insists on going out to check on her daughters leaving them alone at home. She is worried because her older daughter, who is eight, sometimes forgets to check on her younger sister. Unable to find anyone willing to accompany her, she ventures into the mist alone and is soon lost. As the crowd begins to calm down by reminiscing about better times, David searches for blankets for his son. He is directed by the store manager to check the logging dock nearby, which he does in an attempt to provide some comfort amid the confusion. After entering the dock through the back door, David notices a malfunctioning emergency generator spewing smoke and decides to shut it off. In the sudden silence and darkness, he hears an unsettling noise coming from behind the garage door, as if something is pushing against it. When he returns inside to warn a group of local men about the strange noise, they dismiss his concerns. Despite David's protests, insisting it's not safe, one of the men accuses him of being condescending and thinking they're foolish. In an attempt to prove his bravery, a young store clerk named Norm opens the garage door against David's advice. Instantly, a tentacled creature grabs Norm by the leg. David and another local, Ollie, desperately try to pull him free, but they fail, leading to Norm's death. The group barely manages to fend off the creature, severing one of its tentacles with an axe before slamming the door shut. As they discuss whether to inform the others in the store about the danger, they realize that the inside of the store isn't as safe as they had thought. When David and the others share what happened in the dock with the rest of the store's customers, they're met with disbelief and laughter, dismissing it as a bad joke. However, their skepticism fades after being shown the severed tentacle as proof. With the store owner confirming the threat, David and Ollie instruct everyone to barricade the storefront windows. Meanwhile, a religious fanatic named Mrs. Carmody begins preaching about Armageddon and Judgment Day terrifying the children. Her ominous declarations prompt Amanda Dunfrey, a teacher, to step in and slap Mrs. Carmody, silencing her. Despite the growing fear, a group of skeptics led by Brent Norton decides to leave the store, hoping to find rescue outside. David tries to reason with Brent, but this only angers his neighbor more. As a precaution, one of the locals volunteers to retrieve a shotgun from Ambrose's truck and the group ties a rope around his waist to monitor his progress in the mist. As the volunteer ventures into the mist, the rope suddenly begins to jerk violently before going still. With dread filling the store, David starts to pull the rope back, inch by inch, expecting the worst. Soon, blood appears on the rope, and when it's fully reeled in, only the lower half of the biker's body remains. The entire store is shocked, and the adults shield the children from the gruesome sight. Now fully convinced of the danger, the people begin to take the threat seriously. As night falls, some of the store's occupants put up lights, hoping they might repel the creatures. Unfortunately, the lights instead attract enormous, 
nightmarish insects. The creatures repeatedly slam into the glass until it finally shatters, allowing them to swarm the store. Panic ensues as everyone scrambles to escape the insects, but some are not so lucky. A wasp-like creature stings the store clerk Sally in the neck, and in the chaos, two more people are killed by the insects, while another is burned to death in a failed attempt to incinerate them. Sally's death deeply affected Jessup, who had just confessed his feelings for her moments before. Amid the chaos, Mrs. Carmody, who had been preaching about impending Judgment Day, survived an insect attack unscathed, which she took as a divine sign. This only intensified her fervent preaching, gaining her more followers among the survivors. Meanwhile, the store manager, Ollie, heroically saved Billy from an attacking insect by shooting it just in time. The next morning, David leads a small group to the neighboring pharmacy in search of medical supplies and possibly other survivors. Despite Amanda and others expressing concern about the danger of this mission and the risk of leaving his son orphaned, David remains determined. He reassures them by pointing out that the biker had traveled much further before he was killed. Mrs. Carmody, initially opposing the expedition, is silenced by a can thrown by Irene Reepler, an ex-teacher who had grown tired of her incessant religious rhetoric. Despite the tension, David's group successfully reaches the pharmacy. Inside, they find a horrifying scene. A nest of giant spiders and the bodies of a group led by Brent, used as a breeding ground for countless new spiders. The spiders attack, killing two men with their fiery webs. In their desperate retreat, Dan fights off another spider at the exit door using a stick. The remaining group manages to return to the store albeit with heavy losses. Back at the store, Mrs. Carmody exploits the failed expedition to expand her influence, offering protection from divine wrath to new followers. Many begin forming prayer circles under her leadership. David reflects on the final words of the deceased soldier in the pharmacy, I'm sorry, which leads him to suspect military involvement in the disaster. Discovering that two soldiers had committed suicide out of guilt, David confronts the third soldier, Jessup. Jessup reveals that a government project aimed at exploring other dimensions may have accidentally opened a portal to the dimension from which the invading creatures came. Enraged by this revelation, Mrs. Carmody's followers turn on Jessup, stabbing him and expelling him from the store. He is immediately devoured by a giant mantis-like creature. Distressed by these events, David's son, Billy, asks him to promise not to let the monsters take him. The next morning, David, along with Amanda, Billy, Ollie, Bud, Irene Reepler, and Dan Miller, prepares to leave the store in search of safety from the growing fanatical cult. As they attempt to exit through the front door, they encounter Mrs. Carmody, who claims to be a vessel of God, and demands that Billy be sacrificed to appease her version of God. In the ensuing chaos, David prepares to defend his son, but Ollie, driven by rage and desperation, shoots Mrs. Carmody ending her reign of terror. He then turns his anger toward the traumatized followers, forcing them to back down and allowing the group to escape. Despite their efforts, he and two others are killed by creatures while attempting to reach David's van. Fortunately, Bud manages to run back inside the store. Only David, Billy, Amanda, Dan, and Irene reach the car in the end. As David tries to grab Amanda's pistol from the car's hood, he narrowly avoids a monster's attack but secures the gun, believing it might be their only defense. They drive through the mist towards David's house, where they discover his wife, Stephanie, lifeless and entangled in webs. Overcome with grief, David decides to get them as far away from town as possible. As they drive, they pass abandoned cars on the highway and encounter a towering six-legged beast. After hours on the road, they run out of gas. Trapped in the mist with terrifying noises drawing closer, David contemplates the unthinkable. With only a few bullets left, he suggests, through his expression, that they should end their lives to avoid a more gruesome fate. Realizing they are one bullet short, David chooses to bear the burden himself, sparing the others from further suffering. Just as David prepares to shoot his son, Billy, the boy wakes up to find the gun pointed at him, and a shot is fired. David then shoots the remaining survivors with the last bullets. Overwhelmed with guilt and despair, he exits the car, screaming for the creatures to take him. But then, the mist begins to clear, 
revealing the arrival of a U.S. Army armored column, successfully exterminating the creatures and restoring order. Among the rescued survivors on one of the trucks, David sees the woman who had left to find her children. In that devastating moment, David realizes that he had killed his son and the others for nothing, and he is left screaming in unbearable agony. I thought I was done.